Okay, uh, so one of uh, the last things we're going to do in this unit is perform stoichiometric calculations. Okay, and stoichiometry are just numerical calculations involving chemical reactions. Okay, and so let's uh, think of a, just a generic reaction. So let's say A plus 2B produces C. Now let's say 3C. Okay, so that's our balanced chemical equation. And of course, these numbers are coefficients. All right, um, what these coefficients tell us is the relationship. And when we are balancing chemical reactions, we often set atoms, but of course we can say uh, moles as well, because moles is a collection term for atoms. And so, coefficients is a molar relationship between reactants and products. And that's going to be very important for us for a variety of reasons. Molar relationship between reactants and products all right and so what this says is that okay for every two moles of B that I have I can make three moles of C for every one mole of A I need two moles of B to make three moles of C and so using this relationship and we're going to use them as conversion factors we can ask questions like, okay, if I want to make 25 grams of a product, how much of the reactants do I need to start with? Or, I have so much of a reactant, how much product can I make? And that is essentially what stoichiometric calculations give us the ability to do. They give us um, the ability to answer those questions. Okay, And so, uh, the coefficients, what we do is we're going to use them as conversion factors. And so, let's talk about the relationship between B and C. So, we can say that 2 moles of B, if I have 2 moles of B, that will equal 3 moles of C at the end of this reaction. And of course, this is in quality. This relationship is an equality we can think of. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this as, of course, conversion factors. 2 moles of B per 3 moles of C, or 3 moles of C per 2 moles of B. And so when we ask those questions about, okay, I want to make so much C, how much B do I need? I can use that relationship. And we can do that for any reactant relationship or product to reactant relationship. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples to try to illustrate this concept. All right, so here we have sort of the net chemical reaction for cellular respiration. We got glucose, sugar molecule, reacting with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. Now, if we look at this chemical reaction, we can see that it is not balanced. And so that's one of the first things we need to do. The uh, relationship between reactants and products is only true with a balanced chemical equation. That shows the relationship. Okay, So I've got uh, six carbons on the left. So I'm going to need six carbons on the right. And so I can balance that with a six. I've got 12 hydrogens on the left, only two on the right. So I need a coefficient of six there as well. I've got six, eight oxygens on the left, and I've got six times two is 12, and then six times one is six oxygen, so I've got 18 oxygens on the right. Okay, so I need uh, to balance the oxygens, and I can do so by placing a six here. Now six plus 12 is 18, and that will be the same as uh, on the right. Okay, so now that I know these uh, coefficients for this balanced chemical equation, that is a relationship. For every one mole of glucose, I'm going to need six moles of oxygen. 
For every one mole of glucose, I'm going to produce six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. All right. And so to go back to this question, how many moles of water are produced by the complete metabolism of 0.25 moles of glucose? All right. So my final answer, I need moles of water. And then I'm going to figure out how many moles of water are going to be produced from 0.25 moles of glucose, C6H12O6. So here's uh, the new conversion factor that I'm going to need. All right. Well, I know the relationship between water and moles. It is a 1 to 6 relationship. So for every 1 mole of glucose, that equals one, excuse me, six moles of water. And so of course, I can write two conversion factors here. I can say that there's one mole of glucose needed for every six moles of water produced, or six moles of water for every one mole of glucose. All right, and so which uh, conversion factor do I need? I need moles of glucose to cancel out and moles of water to be left. All right, so that's going to give me, that's going to need the red conversion factor. Six moles of water produced from every one mole of glucose. Moles of glucose cancel out. And so now I know that 0.25 times 6 is how many? 1.5 moles of water. And so with uh, two significant figures, that is going to work. 1.5 moles of water are produced. Okay, so for this stoichiometric calculation, um, we're using the same concept that we've used over and over to convert values. We need to develop a inequality, which is a relationship. And that relationship comes from the coefficients of my balanced chemical equation. That tells me the relationship between two different molecules or atoms. From every equality, I can make two conversion factors. And so whatever I need to convert, I can figure it out by putting the moles that I want to get rid of, or the units I want to get rid of on the bottom, and the units that I want for my final answer on the top. All right, let's do one more example. This time, we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate uh, mass. All right. So how many grams of glucose uh, would be produced uh, in photosynthesis if 1.25 moles of carbon dioxide are consumed? How many grams of glucose are produced, is probably what this needs to say, in the photosynthesis process. So this is the reverse of our cellular respiration. Of course, plants use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into hydrocarbons like glucose and, of course, oxygen. All right. And so let's think about what our units we want. We want grams of glucose for our final answer. And we're going to convert to that from 1.25 moles of carbon dioxide. All right, and so here's our relationship that we're gonna use. Six moles of carbon dioxide are gonna produce one mole of glucose. Um, and then get to get to grams, we're gonna need to convert from moles to grams using the molar mass. Okay, so this is gonna involve two conversions. First, we're gonna go from moles of CO2 to moles of glucose using the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation and then we can convert to grams of glucose, just like we converted from moles to grams in previous examples. 
Of course, in uh, this scenario, we're going to need the coefficients as our conversion factor to convert from moles of something to moles of something else. And then we're going to need to figure out the molar mass of glucose to convert from moles to grams. All right, so what's our first conversion factor? Well, we know that uh, we want to go from moles of CO2 to moles of glucose. And so I'm going to put six moles of CO2 on the bottom and then one mole of glucose on top. That way moles of CO2 cancel out. And I've got moles of glucose. And so I'm done with that calculation. All right, now I just need to calculate the molar mass of glucose. So I'm going to multiply 6 times the atomic mass, molar mass of carbon, plus 12 times the molar mass of hydrogen, plus 6 times the molar mass of oxygen. And where do I get those molar masses for those individual atoms? Yep, of course, the uh, periodic table of the elements. Carbon comes in at 12.01 grams per mole. Hydrogen 1.008, and then oxygen is 16.00. All right, and so 6 times 12.01 grams per mole plus 12 times 1.008 grams per mole plus 6 times 16.00 grams per mole. All right, what do we get here? All right, so we got six carbons plus 12 hydrogens plus six oxygens equals Something they yeah, did something wrong. So what do we got? We got six carbons plus twelve hydrogens plus six oxygens. All right, there we go. So we got one eighty point one five six, and we need to cut this down to two decimal places. So one eighty point one six grams per mole. All right. And so we're going to use that as our conversion factor to go from moles of glucose to grams. And so I want moles on the bottom. So one mole of glucose and grams on the top. 180.16 grams. Moles cancel out. And so I've got the units for my final answer. And that's what I wanted. And so I can put this in my calculator now. 1.25 moles divided by 6 times 180.16, 37.5, and 1, 2, 3, exact numbers. Um, yeah, so coefficients, we don't have to worry about significant figures, they're, they're exact numbers. So we've got 3 here, 5 here, and so we need to cut this down to 3, and so that's going to be 37.5 grams of glucose. All right, so for this problem, we use the coefficients again to convert between one substance to another. So we use the relationship that six moles of CO2 are gonna produce one mole of glucose. And that was my conversion factor. And then we converted from moles to grams in the same problem using the molar mass, which we've done previously.